Good morning, Living Water Fellowship. It's great to have you here this morning. Hello to everyone out on Facebook as well. Um, boy, c- good crowd today. Great to have you. Um, some announcements first before we get started with our worship. My nose is itching. Does that mean somebody is thinking of me? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, the men's group meets at 9.30 Sunday mornings back here in the Sunday school room for a time of devotion and prayer. Love to have you join us for that if you can. Um, the twos, on Tuesday nights, we have a, a Bible study for anybody that wants to join. It's at 6.30 p.m., and we are studying Goliath Must Fall. It's a great uh, video and um, time of discussion afterwards, and we all have Goliath, uh, Goliaths in our lives that need to fall. And so that's an awesome time, Tuesday night, 6.30 for anyone who wants to join us here in the sanctuary. On Wednesday night, ladies, we just finished doing the Book of Esther, and the ladies told me Wednesday night that, you know, we want to watch Goliath Must Fall too. And so we're going to do Goliath Must Fall on Wednesday nights as well. So men, if you can't make it Tuesday night, you can come to Wednesday night, and ladies, you can come on Wednesday night or Tuesday night. We're going to be doing part three on Tuesday nights because we just we've already started it. And then we're going to start part one on Wednesday night so that you get a chance to come and see Goliath Must Fall. Um, So it's an excellent study. And then Thursday night, Desiring Truth, we have a Facebook devotional time. It's at 6.30 as well. And you can go ahead and tune into that. It's about a 20, 20, 25-minute devotional time. And then on Saturdays, we have our Saturday service. We started two weeks ago. And we're already growing. Went from 11 the first Saturday. Now we're at 13. Um, So we're excited to see what the Lord's going to do with that. We haven't really even done any advertising yet other than on Facebook. So if you want to come join us on Saturday night at 630, we have a service that lasts one hour. And um, so you're welcome to come to our Saturday night service. Um, The YWCA and the Rescue Mission we still give to. Uh, year round and we have those boxes right around the corner there so if you're cleaning out your closet and want to give um, some old uh, old clothes or you know gently used clothes shoes coats um, that kind of thing um, we can collect them and someone will take them down there Um, tithes and offerings we are going to uh, start passing a plate in the sanctuary and then also we have a box in the back underneath the clock if you want to give there. And then we also have a way to give online, www.pwlivingwaterfellowship.com. So again, if you, uh, there's three different ways to give there, www.pwlivingwaterfellowship.com. And then we have a prayer corner over here in the back, quiet little time uh, if you need some prayer and would like one of the leaders to pray with you or if you'd like a time to have some communion with the Lord, um, that's available back here as well after service, and um, you're welcome to use that. And then uh, we have a leadership meeting today. Um, I forgot about it to announce it last week, and thank you, Debbie, for (laughs) reminding me, but if you're part of the leadership team, uh, we will be feeding you lunch after service today, and you can... um, uh, just uh, come and enjoy lunch and see what's on, uh, on the agenda for the leadership team. If you're not part of the leadership team and you'd like to know what's going on and would like to kind of be a part of that and see, you're welcome also to come and have some lunch with us and, and see what we're doing and what's, going, what's coming up. And then at the end of the month, Saturday the 29th, which is yeah, the last Saturday in October, we're going to have a barbecue potluck for, for our Saturday night service. Um, So it would be really great if you guys wanted to show up for Saturday night service. Uh, We're going to start that at 5.30 so that we can have worship at 6.30. So at 5.30, we'll come and have some hamburgers, hot dogs, barbecue, um, just open up our Saturday night service, and then at 6.30, we'll have um, the service. And then the very next day, the very next day, Sunday, (laughs) Sunday the 30th, is our, is our annual harvest potluck. So see, you don't have to eat all weekend. You can just come and eat here. 
<laughs> um, but after church on Sunday, on that following Sunday, we'll have our harvest potluck, you know, the pumpkin pies and the soups and the chilies and things like that. So we'd love to have you join us for that as well. Okay, so it'll be a weekend of celebration, harvest celebration. And I think that's all the announcements for, for me. I would like to have Mary come up. She has an announcement. Good morning, friends Good morning. and Facebook friends. I am uh, offering all of us an opportunity for another way to give to the church besides with our tithes and offerings. We need volunteers, and I don't know any place who doesn't, but uh, here's where we need help. And you can tell we need a lot of help, so, <laughs> or personally speaking. Um, we need a backup video person. We need a backup sound person, and we need a backup Facebook person. How about you? <laughs> we need church cleaning done, um, vacuuming, bathrooms, and trash. And then we need have supply needs, um, all those things over there that we use, Kleenex, plasticware, small plates, napkins, snacks, small bowls, Cake cups for coffee, paper towels. And Sue gave me these to show you. These are two things that are needed now. Sturdy bowls, um, because these are pretty big, so a lot of food can go in them, and they need to be sturdy. <laughs> so, so that, and then plastic spoons as well. Those are the ones that are needed most, not urgently, but most, uh, most quickly. OK. So, uh, so if you can help, and we sure hope you can in any way there. Charlie's already offered to help clean bathrooms, and thank you, Charlie. So uh, <laughs> he said he was going. He said he was going to bring his toothbrush. We'll see. <laughs> so, so that's it. And if you have any questions about the supplies that you want to uh, donate, please see Debbie or Sue because they know what's needed most, like these two items right here. That's it, I think. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mary. All right, worship team, if you'll come forward. Yeah, I was just telling Mary, I like the, the really sturdy bowls and plates, you know, like those commercials where they put the spaghetti on the plate and it just... We're big eaters around here, so we need the, the <laughs> bigger plates. Thank you. All right, let's worship the Lord. If you'd like to stand with us. Okay. I think Can you hear me? Okay. Mary, uh, thanks again for that. That's awesome. Uh, uh, step up and do that. Um, <clears throat> the eye of the storm. Anybody ever been in a storm? Never. <laughs> you know, God is right in the middle of our storms to take care of us. That's why I love this song so much. One, two, three, four. Your love's 
surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Woo!
Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you're more than enough. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us through every storm. And Lord, thank you that sometimes we just need to rest in you and realize just how great you are. You give us life. You give us love. You give us everything. You give us our breath. And thank you, Lord, for how great you are.
Jesus. You may be seated. Okay, Pastor Ron. Come right on up. Have a seat on the floor here. <laughs> I say you come, okay, all right. Well, it's good to see you today, and good to have you. We're gonna have some great time here. Now, these dessert shells that Helen's gonna pass out to you in a few moments, they taste yummy by themselves. As a matter of fact, I ate one without anything on it, and they, oh, I, it was good. But they're, they're a little bit like life. Life can be really fun. It's sweet. And we look forward to each day. Helen, you can go ahead and pass them out. And they can hold them while you put the other stuff on. And just like we look forward to a bite of cake with creamy icing. Mm. You know, I eat cake for the icing. <laughs> and especially when it's got a lot of icing on it. However, we want our nutrition too. The Ten Commandments are nutritious to our spirit. They're sort of like the pieces of fruit that Helen's, uh, uh, Sister Helen's gonna put on your, your uh, 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 cake there. If we take the word of God, we'll be more spiritually fit. If we remember the Ten Commandments, they will nourish our spirit. Now, while Sister Helen is passing out the fruit and putting it on your, your short cake, I'm gonna read the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. Don't make gra any graven images. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath. Honor your parents. Don't murder. Don't cheat on your spouse. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't be jealous. Now we have a snack that's not only tastes good, but it's loaded with nutrition too, isn't it? It's kind of like our lives. If they're loaded with the knowledge of the Ten Commandments, they make us act better and they make us uh, even sweeter to those whom we come in contact with. I'm going to pray and bless this and you can take your, your uh, cakes back to your seat and finish eating them up. And the adults that are hungry, we'll put some over on the on the serving table, <laughs> and you can have, have some later. Dear Jesus, help us to commit the Ten Commandments to memory and never, ever forget them. Show us how to live the commandments in our daily lives so that we are sweet to the people we meet daily and to you. Now, Lord, bless this food that we're about to eat in Jesus' holy name. Don't be eating up all that fruit there, Tony. I see you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Man, it's good to see all of you this morning. Smiling faces. It's awesome. God has given me a message called Unwrapping Your Spiritual Gifts. The text is from 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 18 today. And I'll go through that far and then we'll finish the rest next week, but <clears throat> if you will, um, before I do that, I just want to say, yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie, you look good. <laughs> Football will do up-downs. I hated those. Um, God is really bless, blessing Saturday night and uh, a different group of people coming, and I'm just so excited about that, and I want to say to those out there in uh, uh, live streaming land, join us. If you can't make it on Sunday morning, Come and join us on Saturday night. It's an hour service. I think they cut me off after a while. You know, I'm just talking. No, but it's been awesome, and it's been a blessing to, to watch God grow that. All glory to Him. 
Anyway, if you will stand with me, and I will read through these. Now, Charlie, up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> if you can. All right. Yeah. I don't get paid to tell jokes. But anyway. anyway. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be, be ignorant, Paul says. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however uh, uh, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, uh, nine to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, ten. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, different kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in the fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he, as he pleased. You may be seated. And may there be a blessing to the reader and hearer of God's holy, holy word. My main theme would be, these are diverse gifts that can be granted to faithful members of the church. A lifelong application, the most important spiritual gift you can have is sharing the gospel. You can have all these other things, but sharing the gospel is the most important one. Let's get into what God has given us to learn today. You know, when I was a kid, when I was many years ago, you laughed awful hard at that, Mary. You, you really laughed at that. But it was a big deal, the young household. Christmas was a big deal at our household. My mom would go out of her way to make sure us kids got at least one or two gifts that we really wanted, placed around with care around our real live Christmas tree. You see those anymore? I don't know, maybe some people. A Christmas tree that was beautifully decorated, featuring a revolving light, and it would flash orange and whatever, red and green and blue, whatever. And it played Christmas music. Then there were all the baked items, I'm telling you. Cookies, pies, cakes, and then tons of Christmas candy. Maybe some of you remember the old ribbon candy, okay? Take you an hour to eat the thing, it was about that long. But yeah. And then uh, chocolate, tons of chocolate, peppermint sticks, divinity, I don't care for that too much, too sugary. And then on and on. And then we'd have a large Christmas dinner. Let me tell you, there'd be ham, mashed potatoes and gravy, Green bean casserole, dirty green beans, yeah. My wife laughs at that. Tossed salad, cranberry sauce, baked corn, collard greens, roast beef, candy yams, buttered rolls, and chitlins. Nobody knows what that is? Well, they're boiled pig intestines. I didn't care too much for those, but they were there. But you know, church, the big deal for us kids was the gifts we would receive. You see, church, there were three categories of gifts for us. There were small gifts, like cologne, perfume, brute soap on the rope. I know Barry remembers that one. These were stocking stuffers. <laughs> he expected to hide his face. Then there were the medium gifts, okay? These were 
socks and underwear, school supplies, which I kind of put off to the side, and a favorite snack. And then the third thing of gifts, the, I call these bodacious gifts, bicycles, a Johnny Crackfire rifle. I bet y'all don't remember that. This girl shaking his head. This thing gave a report that sounded like a bullet was twinging off a rock. Poing! On the end, it was so, so cool. Yeah, I had one of those. And then my sister had an easy bake cooking oven. I think it had a 100 million watt light bulb in the middle of that thing, and you could cook. I don't know what it was. It was a big light bulb in there, and you could cook. And then electric train sets and Barbie dolls. Okay. My sisters hated me for a long time when I took their bar Barbie doll and took a pair of scissors and cut all the hair off of them. I made them bald Barbie dolls. Mom! Well, anyway, another sermon. Okay. You know, as kids, we never found where those gifts were hidden, but they were always there on Christmas morning. But we never thought about how much effort and money and sacrifice of planning it took to make sure we had a memorable Christmas. As kids, we were given gifts of love, although I'm sure we really never appreciated that. Those gifts were just understood to be gifts, and then we got new stuff. Let me ask you some questions, church. Have you ever received a gift that when you saw it, you said to yourself, now be honest, you, know, you said to yourself, why would they give me this? I've had a few of those. What would they do? I would never wear a purple tie with pink polka dots. But you smile and say what? Thanks. Appreciate that. Or you say to yourself, are you kidding me? They bought me a chia hit? Really? <laughs> Remember those? I know. Or maybe you unwrap a gift, look inside, and it's just a rock. That, I got that for one Christmas from somebody. I never, I mean, you know, I don't know what I did with that. I think I threw it outside someplace. Anyway, but we smile and say, wow, that's great. The truth is we really don't have any control over what people give us. But God can bless us with some extraordinary gifts, gifts that we can use to honor and bless him and bless others. God can bless us with spiritual gifts that have a specific role in the body of Christ, just as each part of the physical body has a specific role. The eyes see, correct? Okay, I wear glasses now, but I can still see. I'm not wearing them now. The hands hold. The feet walk to the trash can and throw away the gifts you got for Christmas that you didn't want. <laughs> the ears hear. The mouth speaks. God has designed our bodies that no one part of the body can function as it ought to without the other parts. The gifts God gives us are more than some toy we received one Christmas and then forgot about the next Christmas. The gifts of God are not some unwanted gifts that we toss in file 13. You see, church, the body of Christ, mm, the body of Christ is not some prepackaged gift. It is not an establishment or an organization, but it's a collection of believers that have a mutual love for Christ, for Jesus, and a desire to serve him. It is the visible part of the invisible Jesus, the living, breathing, display of his redemptive power and love for mankind. So what does God say through Paul about all this? Some interesting things. You know, Paul was always getting on the Corinthian. This is a, this church. And he says, uh, brothers and sisters, concerning these gifts of the Spirit, he says, if you're following me, this is verses 1 through 3. He says, I don't want you to be uninformed. And I'm using uh, New King James Version. Um, he said, I don't want you to be uninformed. In other words, he wanted them to understand what he was talking about, church. He tells them, and Paul was very straightforward. When you were pagans and easily influenced, you washed up, washed up idols. If you speak by the Holy Spirit, then you will say Jesus is Lord and not Jesus is cursed. Paul says there are different kinds of gifts, but only, only one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit, that distributes them. 
Verse 5 and 6 says there are different ways to serve, different kinds of work or jobs. But in all our work and jobs and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Not a different God, not some other God, but it's the holy God at work. Each of these gifts of the Spirit is for the common good of everyone. Okay, You don't get a gift and keep it to yourself. You share it with everyone. If someone speaks in tongues, you know they're speaking to God, right? So it is very important to have someone interpret. I've heard people speak in tongues without an interpreter. And they say this stuff, I turn my head, it made no sense to me. And it was not beneficial to anyone. If we speak in tongues, we need to have someone tell us what this person is saying. Likewise, if someone has the gift of prophecy, then what they say must be confirmed by the word of God. The Bible. This is where you get your information from, right here. There is no authority that can change what has been established and authorized by God. What we need to do as believers, let me tell you, is to follow God's word as God intended. I struggled this week in school because a lot of, we have 14 students in this particular class I'm taking and half of the class or more said, well, we don't believe. Now, these are young men and women that are going out to preach the word of God, to be pastors. We don't believe that God is in control of everything a human does. I kind of shook my head. Went, what? We don't believe. We believe that God has some control, but he doesn't have all control. They also went on to say, we don't believe that God has all knowledge. What? So I got in a little bit of an argument. I stepped in it with both feet, church. Boom. Because I believe the God we serve does know everything and he does know what we're thinking now and what we thought before and what we might be thinking later. Amen. I believe that. What's the point? We're making God down and bringing him to our level if we think that way. We serve an absolute God that is in total control of what we do. I can't help it sometimes about what's going out there. God knows about it, but here's the key. One thing he gave us is a free will. I said that in class. He gave us a free will. It's not his fault that we sin. That's our choice to sin. What we need to do as believers is to follow God's word in our preaching and teaching. We are to share the pure gospel of Christ. Simple. In verses 8 and 9 and 10, Paul says we're all given different gifts. Someone is given the word of wisdom, another the word of knowledge, still another the gift of faith, another the gift of healing. We have the gift of miracles, discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues. I would classify these gifts as extraordinary. Okay? But let me ask you something. What about the everyday gifts? Like prayer. That is a gift. Do you know people who pray and our prayer warriors can cause God to move in a mighty way. I've seen it. God will restore broken relationships, secure finances, heal broken bodies and sicknesses. People who pray in the Spirit have an incredible gift from God. And we don't do it enough. We don't pray enough. We sometimes pray we're in trouble. Most of the time, God is left on some island, some place, or wherever we left him. I'm telling you, these days, we need to walk with God daily. We need to seek him daily. We need to ask him, Lord, what do you want us to do? Where do you want me to go? The gift of prayer is not used enough. How about the gift of service? I heard many people say, oh, I don't have a gift. God hasn't given me anything. I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Well, I know all of us can pray, and all of us 
can be used the gift of service. Do you know that when people serve, it creates an atmosphere of service if the serving is done to glorify God? So many times people run themselves into the ground by trying to be the utility person that does everything in the church or everything in their community or everything, everything. God honors hard work, but only if the hard work honors him. When you serve, you must allow God to guide you in whatever you're doing. Sometimes that means saying no. No, I can't. And spending time with God. See, all this stuff we do is important to a point, but what God really wants from us, church, is for us to spend time with him, to love him with our whole heart, to listen to him. Some of my best times of prayer when I sat and shut my big mouth and just let God speak to me. Try it. Be quiet sometime. There's a lot of noise out there, and I know we're busy and stuff, but the times that we can get by ourselves and just listen to what God is speaking to us are magical. They're incredible. Be still and know that I'm near. On the other hand, some people come into a church, find a comfortable place for their behind, sit there, and wait to be served. I've seen that. God wants us to serve others, especially in the church. But serving is God-inspired and not our desires. Did you hear me, church? It's God-inspired. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go, Lord? How about the gift of being thankful? That's a huge gift. And we miss it. Totally miss it. I've seen many Christians sit down at a table filled with all kinds of good stuff to eat. And they just reach and start grabbing. Dig in. They don't even think about bowing their head in prayer and thanking God for that meal. Have we become so arrogant and assuming that we've forgotten where these gifts, where this food, where these things come from? I wonder, being thankful is a spiritual gift. Praying is a spiritual gift. Serving is a spiritual gift. We're not all going to be able to speak in tongues or prophesy and do some of the extraordinary gifts. But whatever gift God has given you, use it for his glory to your fullest for others in him. God can give us any spiritual gift that he chooses. It's up to him. Sometimes Christians will pray for a different gift. There's nothing wrong with that. But if God has already given you a gift, that's the one he wants you to use. God is not going to bless you with another gift if you're not using the one he already gave you, church. God gives spiritual gifts because he wants to. And they glorify him to bless other people. It is his choice, not ours. In verse 11, as Christians, we need to understand that it is the Holy Spirit that works or controls all these spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit. But the Spirit distributes them to each of us as he wills or wants to. In verse 12, Paul says that there is unity and diversity in one body. He was talking about the human body. He says the body is one or a complete body but it has many members. But all the members, all the members of that one body, there are many, but they still belong to that one body. In other words, everything that God has given us all works together. Okay? It's the same way in the church body. Then he compares the human body to the body of Christ. Look what Paul says in verse 13. He says, for by one body... We are all baptized into one body, the body of Christ. And it does not matter what race, nationality, gender, what we believe or don't believe, Jew, Greek, slave, free, black, white, or blue, or green. He doesn't care. We have all been made to live by the Holy Spirit. Verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. The church is made of many people. We're all different, but we all are a collective unit because we all belong to Christ. 
In verse 15, Paul says, if the foot could say to the hand, which would be kind of weird, but anyway, <laughs> because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body. And if the ear would say, I'm not an eye, so I'm not part of this either. You know, if the whole body were an eye, that would be weird. But like Paul says, where would the hearing be? Where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, how could we smell? Okay? Verse 18, God has set the member of the body, each one of them, in the body as he pleases. So, church, in the in the church, in God's church, we all have different things that God has given us to do. It may not be the same thing. It may not be up here behind this podium, but God, if he tells you to be a door greeter, then you be the best door greeter you can be. We do, Miss Mary. If he tells you to pray, then you need to pray. Don't neglect that and think about, well, maybe I should be doing something else. Praying doesn't have to be hard. Praying is simply talking to God, expressing your feelings in an honest way. You don't have to have big, fancy words. Sometimes when I pray, it's just, God, I'm broken today, and I need you. Can you come and help me? And he's there. Simple, simple, honest prayers. You can't be like the Pharisee who stood in the corner and said, oh, I'm, I, I, I don't want to be like those people over there. You need to go to God in your closet or in some place that's private to you. Kneel down on your knees and ask God what he wants. Do we ask God what he wants? Are we afraid to do that? I've learned to do that. God, what do you want? For me today? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? How can I show someone your love? I don't think we do that enough, church. I really don't. As Christians, as I always say, we need to be the shining example of God. We need to be. We see everything else out there. Turn on the TV. Click. Man, they'll tell you what's going on in the world. You see Christians up there? Where are we? What are we doing? Are we ashamed of a holy God that has preserved us and loved us? God, I hope not. I stood up to my class. I said, I don't believe in open theism. This is where they say, well, um, God is not in control. He's not absolutely in control. We're in control, too. God is in control. God handles his business. We are his business, and he is handling us. He is doing what he needs to do for us. Our problem is, I think, four inches of, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a brain up there. We forget that God is in control. We forget that God died for us. We forget that God is holy and divine. And he has a plan for each and one of our lives. We forget those things. And we need to start thinking about them. Now, church. Right now. Right now. It's time to change our thinking. Change this. We change our heart. We turn back to a holy God. Not away from him. I didn't say it was easy. But I said we need to do it. We need to do it immediately. God has set the member of the body, each one of them, as he pleases. You know, having a choice is awesome. It truly is. God gave us a free will. I had someone in class say, well, I don't believe it because if, it was, if he was that way, then why are, is all this stuff? all these crimes and all this stuff going on in society. I said, you just answered your question. Because of free will. Our choice to serve or not to serve. Do you know that? He's not going to push us. He doesn't want robots. He has angels. 
He loved us enough to say, if you love me, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to give you that free will, and you can come to me on your own accord. That's what he said. That's what free will, free will means. Your choice. God said, I'm not going to make you. We're going to stop here today and finish this chapter next week. But what I want you to understand is Paul wrote about various spiritual gifts that can be received through the Holy Spirit. They don't have to be the extraordinary gifts. They could be the everyday gifts that we tend to forget about. Prayer, thanksgiving, service. Each member of the church is to contribute to the body of the church. The church of Christ, not the church of Jim. This is not my church. This is God's church. You are God's people. I'm no different than anybody else here. God has just blessed me to come up here and speak a few words to you. His words, not mine. It's your choice. He's not worried about, uh, uh, you know, if we're preachers or prophets, teachers, disciples. God is worried about a relationship between us and him. That's all he's concerned about. It is important for us to know that we are part of God's family. Oh, holy God, help us to understand that, that we are part of your family. Help us not to change your word that was inspired by you, written by man, yes, and a book that has survived 2,000 years and the most printed book in the world, the Holy Bible, your word. Help us to understand we have power in your word that you can take us from point A to B to where you want us to go if we ask and if we believe. Help us and help this church to build a culture that says we stand for truth, not our truth, not Jim Young's truth, but your truth, holy God. We stand on your word and we will not the song says, we will not back down. We are your church. Thank you for an opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to do this and speak to you. It is indeed a privilege, and I do not take it lightly. Thank you, Father. Help us to go out there and let others see your light in us all the time. We can make a difference. One Christian can make a difference when they say, I am a child of the living God. Here's my story. Here's what God did for me. Thank you, Father. In your mighty name, I ask these things. Amen. If you'd like to stand with us for one final song.
love this last verse. for this beautiful service. Thank you for this beautiful day. And thank you for an opportunity to praise you all day long. We ask that you just bless us as we go on our way this week until we can meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. Yeah. I guess they just want to keep playing. <laughs>